Here at Explominate, we've been asked many times about what has changed or improved in Old World since its release on Epic and Early Access last year. So we wanted to take a moment to highlight some of the changes for our viewers. First, Mohawk has been hard at work adding character models for most of the game's units, buildings, train types, and special resources, and other visual effects like this ray of sunshine that highlights the selected unit. Here we see an example of a variety of new building types given new art, including these rather pretty fishing boats. In addition, Mohawk has added models from many of the game's man-made wonders, bringing to light these historic structures like the famous Hanging Gardens and the Great Lighthouse shown here. War is an inevitable part of Old World's gameplay, so Mohawk has been hard at work to make sure that it looks as good as it is fun to wage. You can see these slingers here giving the defending warriors the glorious death that they deserve. The religion user interface has also been given many improvements. Now you can select each of the founded religions in your game to see which cities have adopted them. Here, as I select Roman Paganism, a color-coded overlay is shown on the map, as with Judaism shown here, too. Each city that has adopted these religions is also listed on the left side of the screen for your convenience. Alongside those improvements, Mohawk has also added leaders to religions in the form of matriarchs and patriarchs. As you select each religion, if a religion head has been established, you'll be able to see who they are and what type of person they are. As you can see here, Greek paganism doesn't really have much of a foothold in this game. Speaking of paganism, Mohawk has also given it all new mechanics. Instead of spreading paganism through the use of acolytes, as you would with other religions, you spread paganism through the building of shrines to various faction-specific deities. Here, I'm building the Shrine of Eshman to spread my Carthaginian paganism. The user interface for cities has also been provided some useful improvements, making important information easier to obtain. Now you can quickly see your growth rate, your culture accumulation, and your discontent with easy-to-read line graphs. Mohawk has also added dozens upon dozens of new events to Old World, many of them providing multiple different choices and outcomes, depending on how you choose to react to them and the character type and attributes of your leader. Those attributes and character types have also been given much more depth. Now characters are given unique abilities based on their archetype and their characteristics. Here, Queen Claudia is the commander archetype, and as a leader, she grants 10 additional experience points to idle units, a fatigue limit boost, and she can hurry city production with orders. Queen Consort Calpurnia is the diplomat archetype, allowing her to start missions of peace with other major factions and barbarian tribes. She also increases foreign leaders' opinions of her by 40. Archetypes also have an opposing archetype that they don't necessarily like or respect. The diplomat is not a fan of the orator, as you can see here. King Marcus is of the scholar archetype. Scholars unlock Inquiry in their capital, a city project that adds science and culture, and they can redraw tech cards during research selection. A scholar, understandably, doesn't necessarily like the zealot characters, who as leaders can always build state religion improvements and hurry city production with training. As a general, the Zealot can heal their armies in neutral territory. Spy Masters can now train scouts as agents after researching the Rampart technology. This allows them to join a rival city and provide valuable intelligence. Once inside, the agent can conduct missions for the Spy Master, including the ability to infiltrate the foreign nation, slander the nation, or even steal technology from the target nation after researching scholarship from the tech tree. With a more recent update, Mohawk finally implemented the ability to play Old World against your enemies. I mean your friends. It's very easy to set up. All you have to do is give your multiplayer game a name, a password if you choose to do so, and then you'll select how many opponents you'll have in your game, up to 10, among many other options. Then you'll start your game much like Brody and Amanda recently did on their Twitch channel, here. You can check the description below for a link to their channel to see more of their multiplayer games. Looks like Play by Cloud Mode will be coming soon, but in the meantime you can also play with your family and friends in Hot Seat Mode. Just remember to play nicely since they're right there. Old World now also features an in-game mod loader. Here you can easily scroll through the available mods for Old World, some of which add empires, 
or religions and others that add leaders or archetypes. Here is the popular RED mod, which reduces unit and resources sizes and adds new unit formations. And playing a game with a mod is pretty simple. You just download the mod, then you select the manage tab and you turn the mod on, and then you start the game with the mod enabled. And just like that, the RED mod has reduced unit sizes and added more units to formations. And it's just one of a few of the great mods that are already in development, but I'm hoping to see a few more. In 2020, Mohawk Games also ran a community content contest, wherein community members were asked to provide pictures of their younger family members, be it their own children, their nieces or nephews, or even their grandchildren. I'm proud to say that my son was selected as a barbarian child, but he was one of about a dozen that were chosen to be immortalized as in-game characters in Old World. As you may know, Old World made our list of most anticipated 4X and 4X-like games of 2021. With Soren Johnson behind the helm, we're pretty sure it's going to shape up to be something pretty darn special because it already is in a lot of ways. The event system, the way that characters develop and make the game much different each time you play it, and the really solid 4X mechanic foundations that are already in place make this game a game that every 4X fan should be watching. Of course, we'll be keeping a close eye on it as it edges towards its release date here in 2021. You can expect a full review both here on this channel and on our website at www.explominate.co when it's ready. Until then, stay tuned to this channel for more 4X strategy and tactics games news. And as always, keep exploring.